So hi folks, Alex Forrest here vlogging to you on a wintry chilly Thursday morning in Warsaw, Poland. Now in the last vlog I gave you the kind of the basics in terms of daytime approach. In this vlog I want to drill into the approach in a little bit more detail and specifically deal with the issue of being physical with a girl in the street. What does that mean? Oh, I hear a universal deep intake of breath because of course we've had a little bit of a controversy in the news recently uh, certainly in the UK and Scotland because a day gamer was actually arrested and is spending time in prison in fact for approaching girls in the streets in Glasgow. I, I will link a vlog at the end of this vlog that goes into the law on that whole area okay because I'm a lawyer as well as a, a day gamer. So, but you know, here is the, 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 the crux of things, the, kind of the, the dilemma. You've got a clash here. On the one hand, you've got kind of the feminized West, the, the Me Too movement, who, you know, who are sort of social crusaders, protecting the rights of women against all those aggressive males out there. I think probably really all they're doing is having a go of having pot shots at people in positions of influence, public figures, the Donald Trumps, the Harvey Weinsteins of the world are getting the flag. But actually, the vast run of mankind, certainly English speaking mankind in the West, you know, is kind of being pretty paralyzed and terrified by, uh, by all of this stuff on the news because the average Joe is not a dude who acts aggressively toward women. And so he kind of goes into his shell and he doesn't sort of kind of express himself physically and flirtatiously as far as the fairer sex is concerned. I mean, what is happening here and what has happened specifically in the UK with Mr. Addy A game or Addy Day game, whatever he's called, is he has been scapegoated. Now, if you know your ancient history, you'll know what a scapegoat is what they used to do in the city-states of the ancient Greek period was dress up a ceremonial goat I mean you know how crazy is that and they used to send it out into the desert beyond the city walls and sacrifice it and the idea was that the sins of the city were sort of transferred onto that poor goat and uh, the sacrifice cleansed and purified everybody else's sins uh, and that really is what's happened to Addy Agane, the whoever they may be, uh, the, the champions of women's rights and so on, uh, have found a scapegoat. Uh, and so has the mass media. Uh, they've all, you know, and they've all come away. And then this happens periodically. You know, this happened with Julian LeBlanc, I think that's his name, from RSD. It, it happens with people before him. Society doesn't like it when, uh, you know, men have kind of skills as far as women and dating are concerned. But we're not talking about that and you shouldn't get worried about that. And, and I think probably what's happened with these guys is they've stepped over the mark. I mean, I don't know Addy A game, I don't know Julian LeBlanc, but clearly there's been something of a setup. They have probably been a bit foolish, frankly. I mean, I think it's foolish uploading, uh, you know, vlogs, filming people in very private, intimate situations uh, for commercial gain, you know. Uh, um, and I also think it's probably foolish being a little bit too assertive with younger women in the streets, you know. Uh, you run the risks. But, you know, physicality is an absolutely critical part of the dating dance, the birds and the bees. Women are not going to initiate physical contact with a man. I mean, where does it all end? You're never going to have the world populated if you stop men being allowed to flirt, uh, flirt physically, uh, you know, uh, in a playful way uh, with a girl. That includes touching, uh, because women are not going to initiate that. So what's going to happen? Is a man going to have to carry around a pad of legal waivers. So whenever he sees an attractive girl, whenever he's sat at a bar stall and he playfully pats a girl on the arm, he's gonna have to say, excuse me, love, can you just sign up this waiver here? And it's exclusion clause, so I don't get arrested. 
So, you know, I mean, goodness gracious, that would be the end of the male population of Italy and half of South America, wouldn't it? If it became kind of a criminal offence or even a civil offence to uh, flirt playfully, physically with the opposite sex. Anyway, uh, I, I digress. Let's drill into the kind of the detail of, OK, you've got the basic, uh, absolutely critically critically important skeleton of how you go about approaching girls in the street. What about the physical side of it? What part does that play? Okay. And uh, ultimately, the, the key thing here is emotional intelligence and sort of like just sort of testing the temperature. temperature. But let's go through half a dozen uh, different ways in which you can physicalize an approach on the street. This is particularly important for dudes who are perhaps are not so verbal. They don't like the kind of, kind of the, or, or, or they don't feel the theatrics is their strong suit, the conversation is their strong suit in uh, street approaches or indeed in dating. Uh, and therefore they play a slightly different sort of a game, you know, the sort of strong silent type character. And that can work equally well, if not better than you know verbal pyrotechnics as it were um, if you are in that camp well then you probably need to watch the other video because it's you know good to get out your comfort zone and practice being flirtatious uh, in conversation but if you are already very good in conversation you, you might well take away a few golden nuggets of dating knowledge from this uh, short list of six six things so now the very first thing to say is you know, when you actually approach a girl, she's going to take a reading on your posture, the way you hold yourself, and the confidence that you have. Your bearing is critical, and I've talked about, you know, the idea of being a traffic policeman. Uh, I don't know if, if that's not your bag, the idea of being, I don't know, a blinged up pimp, and, you know, but you're going to actually, once you stop a girl, uh, you're going to do it politely but you're going to do it with confidence and you're going to not be juggling around on your on, on both feet you're not going to be playing with your hands you're just going to have a nice confident posture you know hey excuse me this sounds a little bit crazy but i just saw you crossing the traffic lights and i had to come over and tell you i think you look really nice what I noticed about you was your, your crazy sequined plows. It's kind of like you, I don't know, but popped out of La Folie Bergère, that French dancing club, etc., etc. And then you go into the assumptions. Now, so that's the first thing. It's in the speech, obviously. It's really helpful to slow down, but it's also simply not doing too much with your body and planting yourself in quite a strong position. And that's a physical, that's a physical thing. It doesn't have to be physical touching. The next thing, the second thing, is the eye contact. I mean, I, I, you know, we all have so much to learn about reading someone's reactions rather than be focused on what's running in the back of our heads. You know, the little monkey on the, the, the little hamster on the hamster wheel running around telling us what to do. No, come away from that and give your uh, focus and your attention to the human being in front of you. And a very good way of doing that is eye contact looking at the lips as well it, it could be quite good so you don't come out as a, as a, you know, as a, as a crazy person sort of with a cold hard serial killing stare but you know what try it try making eye contact with people who are just simply going about your day to day if you come off a little bit weird it's just because you you know you have you, you're out of practice you need to practice a few times now here's another thing that I, I, I think I read in uh, Nick Krause's book uh, the day game mastery or I've seen it on a video somewhere is to during the course of the conversation uh, s just take a short small step towards her yeah just come a little bit towards her and then perhaps a little bit more during the course of the conversation and that's all going on while the flirtatious conversation is happening yeah and and now if she backs away well then fine you know you roll back and, and and you know you 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 don't let that phase you but you don't keep on pushing 
I guess a lot of the, these guys who get into trouble have, have, have this idea that you've got to escalate hard and be a man and grab your balls and, and push, 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 push. No, it's all about gauging it, a little bit of a push, testing the waters and then rolling back if, it's, if the girl isn't giving you the signals. You've got to read the signals, obviously. That is quite effective. I, I've used that quite a lot in this tree. It feels a bit odd when you do it at first, but it, is, it can be really quite uh, effective. And if she's not moving away, she's interested. Okay, now the next thing is, you know, like playful touching. If a girl says something silly or you've made a joke and she's laughing, you know, touch her on the arm. See if she's happy with that. If she's not happy with it, well then fine. The, the fifth um, thing, which I think is absolutely golden because uh, at some point in the interaction you're going to introduce yourself. You're going to go say, oh, look, hi, look, it's been really nice meeting you. My name is, and then you hold your hand out and she gives you her hand. And that is a really good sort of tell, as they say. If she lets you hold her hand and if she doesn't pull away, then uh, that's very, a very, very good you know, indication that she's attracted to you. Uh, no girl is going to let you just hold her hand uh, unless she's, and she'll pull her hand away unless she's genuinely attracted to you. I really like that. I, the reason I like that is because during the course of the interaction, the conversation might dry up um, and you're kind of calling out the, the, the craziness of the situation, approaching a girl in the street, and you just say, look, I just had to come up and say hello, look, I'm, and then introduce yourself good old-fashioned introduction and that's great because that helps the interaction changes the kind of the gears of the interaction so you don't get stuck down a hole of a topic that you can't get out of uh, um, but it also helps to physicalize the interaction too so uh, shaking a hand and just holding a hand for a while I mean once or twice if I feel the girls really happy with it I'll turn her hand round and inspect her fingers and say oh god are you a pianist so that, those are musicians fingers you know and I'll, I might take a hand and you know girls are, are quite happy for you to uh, physically um, flirt in this way with them even in broad daylight you've only known them for five minutes now one of the, the sixth thing is what you shouldn't be doing and that is not uh, kissing yeah obviously but I mean it it, it, it it's a trick that uh, pick up artists and confidence coaches you know you see videos from I don't know uh, on YouTube and certainly I, I remember doing a uh, I remember seeing a bunch when I was interested in following the fortunes of the daygame.com boys the London um, day game company and you know they used to make a thing of trying to catch uh, on camera them kissing a girl but when i talked to them about this afterwards they invariably said it's not a very good idea alex it's too much too quickly and it can just spook a girl and you know she may be extremely compliant in the street but remember it's about gauging things if you've got genuine attraction and she's allowed you to be flirtatiously physical don't go crazy maybe an instant that's the opportunity for an instant date yeah but don't go crazy and, and, and try and kiss a girl she may kiss you but afterwards she'll probably feel oh uh, that, that that was too much finally you know at, at the close I think it's really quite important at the close to you're getting out your phone you're assuming she's gonna give you her contact details and that's an opportunity to come round. I mean, she might, you might need to find her on Facebook, to add her on Facebook. You, you, know, you may want her to put her name because you can't spell it because she's foreign or something. And that's, again, an opportunity to simply to come close to her. Perhaps put your arm around her, give her a light squeeze if she says something funny or stupid. Um, and, uh, you know, touch hands as you're swapping contact details. That's all good. And then remember, the final thing is just simply to say, to stay rock solid, you know, goodbye, uh, it's been fun, I'll drop you a text. And she walks off and you walk off, you know, slowly. So hopefully there I've covered a few sort of different areas in which you can be, be flirtatiously physical uh, during a daytime approach. Just 
dip your toe in the water. And as I say, the, the key thing is, is to use your emotional intelligence to gauge where you are into the, into the, in, in the interaction. And if these things just aren't working, uh, and she's not happy with physical contact, and a lot of girls simply aren't, then, you know, just don't go there. And just, you can just as easily uh, generate attraction verbally as you can, as you can physically. Um, okay, so there it is. As I say, there are often two styles of approach, and some guys are more comfortable with just sort of challenging, being the strong, silent, quizzical types, and they've got a lot to teach us because I tend to be more strong on the verbal side they've got a lot to teach us so thank you for uh, tuning in that's I guess part two of the day game basics uh, I will do at least another one on the the day game basics because I think uh, you know that there are, there are a whole a lot of different situations in which you can meet girls, not just obviously on the street, but that's, that's been the starting point so far at the beginning of this series. Now, I am going to be, as you know, uh, releasing second edition of Too Late Mate on Amazon, so you will have a Kindle version now. It's only available currently in print version on Lulu. I'm also going to produce as a kind of a way of launching or sweetening the launch of this book I'm going to be uh, publishing freebies one's a, a, a short story and it's the title of the short story is mysterious duck girl and that was one of the most electric physical uh, without much conversation there was an incredible chemistry almost from the very first second of meeting her up uh, the, uh, the um, both sides of the clothes rack at H&M and uh, so that might be, I think that's worth a read because it's, it, it's relevant to this issue of, you know, uh, physicality and creating this sort of sexual connection, not necessarily by touching, but, you know, by being aware of, you know, your body, your proximity to the girl, eye contact and so on. I think the fancy word for it is Kino. Okay. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to stick the, the vlog on the law and day game uh, at the end of this video. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. Buy my books, you bastards. Until next time.